Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, we're going to be discussing one of the herbivorous dinosaurs that happened to appear on InGen's list. An animal that was actually planned on being featured in one of John Hammond's Jurassic Park resorts. This armored creature is one that's made quite a few notable appearances in the last three films, always portrayed as being peaceful when left to itself, but also formidable when challenged by an opponent. This is an animal that has been noted as being a living tank. The dinosaur that paleontologists have named the Fused Lizard. Ankylosaurus is a member of the Ankylosauridae family and it was discovered by Barnum Brown in 1906. Being one of the largest Ankylosaurid dinosaurs, Ankies are well known to have been more than capable of defending themselves. Despite being a rather slow-moving quadruped, this dinosaur was covered in osteoderms that acted like armor, and this defensive attribute came complete with an offensive club at the end of its tail. Ankies were so tough that they were actually built for defense and strength all the way down to their skeletal structures. This is easily seen when looking at the bones in the skull as well as other parts of its body, which all happen to be fused together. This is what gives the creature its strong name. Speaking of the Ankylosaurus skull, the animal's nostrils actually face sideways instead of towards the front like other members of its family. Another interesting fact about its face is that it came to a point with a beak which had a ton of leaf-shaped teeth inside. Now the famous tail club of the Ankylosaurus was composed of two large osteoderms, a row of smaller ones in the middle, and the tip of the knob would have had an additional two osteoderms rounding it out. The last seven tail vertebrae in the creature's body formed what paleontologists call the handle of the club tail. All of them are connected to each other without any cartilage in between. We believe that tendons are what held the tail club and vertebrae together instead, which would have helped strengthen it in combat situations. Cervical vertebrae in the Yankee's neck had big neural spines that would increase in height towards the body. Their armor was very flat, and it's actually believed to have been smoother than other members of its family like Euplocephalus. Still, with a body covered in a good amount of tough scoots, the dinosaur was well prepared for surviving in its rather harsh environment. Ankylosaurs are estimated to have grown between 6 and 8 meters in length, and they probably weighed between 4.8 and 8 tons. It lived at the very end of the Cretaceous period around 68 to 66 million years ago, which makes it quite possibly one of the very last non-avian dinosaurs that ever walked the Earth. Being one of the last dinosaurs of the Hell Creek Formation and its surrounding areas, Ankylosaurus would share its environment with animals like Triceratops, Edmontosaurus, Pachycephalosaurus, and of course, Tyrannosaurus rex. That being said, fossils of this creature are actually rather hard to find which leads some scientists to believe that the dinosaur was actually ecologically rare in the areas that we found it. Now, many millions of years after this dinosaur fell into extinction, John Hammond's scientists were able to find its DNA trapped in fossilized mosquitoes. And after extracting what they could, they successfully replicated the DNA of the late Cretaceous tank known as the Ankylosaurus. <laughs> Jurassic Park's ankylosaurs were illegally bred on Isla Sorna in 1999. Although the animal was indeed included on InGen's list, and it was in fact planned for exhibition in one of John Hammond's Jurassic Parks, it would factually not be cloned and released on the island until after the San Diego incident happened. Now eventually, these laws against genetic engineering were relaxed in 2003, which promptly led to the illegal Ankies being captured and caged for their transportation to Jurassic World. It's important to note that so far, we've seen two very distinct breeds of ankylosaurs in the Jurassic Park franchise. Franchise. The first variant was shown to be living on Site B in 2001. The bodies of these animals were a dark black and their underbellies were a dull tan. Their faces had a nice red coloration that is noticeably absent in the other variant of the species. The animals seen living on Nublar are far more silver in color, with most of their armor and scales being shown to have a gray color scheme instead. The clones weigh in at around 6 tons and are shown to grow at around 9.6 meters in length. This is quite longer than their real-life counterparts. Unlike the fossilized version of the animal, the engine dinosaurs also have tails that aren't nearly as stiff as the creature that they're based on. But apart from that, we don't really know too much about the actual real-life animal, which means for the most part that the most egregious differences between the two versions is the longer body and non-stiff tail. The last time that we saw this massive herbivore was when it broke out of the Lockwood Estate and made its way into the forests of Northern California, which means we're probably going to get to see it again in the final movie in the Jurassic Park series. 
So what do all of you guys think about Jurassic World's Ankylosaur? Is it a dinosaur that you'd like to see more of, or do you think it needs to stay running around in the background? Personally, I really like the fact that this herbivore has been featured quite heavily in both of the new movies, after it got kind of a bland role in JP3. But I'd love to see the series shine the spotlight on other plant-eating dinosaurs in the final chapter in the saga as well. Now, whatever your own thoughts and opinions may be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. Now before I go, I want to thank all of my game wardens, as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Wes Mordine, David, and Ben Hall. Words can't really express how awesome it is to have you guys tell me how much you enjoy the stuff I do, and I seriously am extremely thankful for everything that you guys do to help. Honestly, it means the world. Now I'd like to thank you all for watching this video, and hope that you all enjoyed today's content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you all in the next video, guys. And as always, take it easy.